Hello and welcome to Dino Week on Earth Juice. Coming up, 12 million year old penguins, dino birds with four wings, and was it really an asteroid? Researcher Daniel Thomas was studying rock sediment in Cape Town, South Africa, when he stumbled across the fossilised remains of ancient penguins. The fossilised bones suggest that these ancient birds range from 30 centimetres tall up to a metre, and that they roamed at the African coastline 10 to 12 million years ago. Drastic climate change marked the end for these Miocene epoch birds, and scientists think that as sea levels fell by as much as 90 metres, these prehistoric penguins simply had nowhere to lay their eggs or raise their young, or shelter from predators, so they sadly succumbed to extinction. A new study on the fossilised remains of 11 species of four-winged Cretaceous period birds sheds new light on the evolution of flight. Discovered at the turn of the century, scientists had debated whether these feathery limbed dinosaurs used all four wings to achieve powered flight, or simply to glide. But new research by a team of Chinese scientists speculate that the stiff veins and curved feathers in certain dinosaur birds were actually aerodynamic in function, providing lift and drag, aiding manoeuvrability, and playing a vital role in avian dinosaurs taking to the air. However, these dino birds appear to be replacing their leg feathers with scales and evolving more bird-like feet, suggesting that perhaps two wings are better than four, and that legs are more suited to walking or hopping along the ground. By and large, paleontologists agree that an asteroid crashing into Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula was the beginning of the end for the dinosaurs. But a new theory has emerged that adds a twist to this prehistoric tale. By examining iridium and osmium levels from the impact zone, scientists were able to deduce that the collision deposited much less debris than previously thought. Dr. Jason Moore from Dartmouth College in New Hampshire, USA, explained that you would need an asteroid of about five kilometers to contribute those levels of iridium and osmium, and that an asteroid of that size would not create a near 200 kilometer crater. To have created a crater of that magnitude and with the same levels of iridium and osmium, a smaller space rock must have been traveling at high speed, and the team suggests that a long period comet is probably the more likely culprit, and not an asteroid as previously thought. That's this week's juice. For more information on any of the stories that you've seen today, check out the links below. 